Facebook uses event IDs to deduplicate events that come from Conversions API and the Pixel. The concept is really simple. You send two events normally, one from Conversions API, one from the Pixel. And what then happens is Facebook receives both of them. The way Facebook knows that they're both for the exact same event is using the event ID. But creating that event ID and sending it simultaneously can be challenging with Google Tag Manager. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I have a demo container here with a typical conversions API setup. If you don't know how to create this on your own, you need to look at the previous video, which is all about setting up conversions API with Google Tag Manager. Out here now, we have two tags, both sending information directly to Facebook, one via the Facebook pixel, the other one via Conversions API through a server-side container. Now, the Facebook pixel has the standard Facebook pixel code and tag that's sending information to Conversions API is going through GA4, which has been set up to receive page views sent to a server container URL. What we need to do is introduce an event ID, which then goes through to both of these tags at the same time with the same value. Now, if you create an event ID for each of these tags, when it's triggered, you'll actually end up creating a different event ID if you're basing it on any sort of temporal or unique event ID that GTM suggests for you. So the best way to actually do this is to create a single event ID at one point using GTM and then set that in the data layer, pick that up from the data layer and pass that set value to both the pixel as well as the conversions API. The first and most obvious question in most people's mind is how do you actually generate that event ID and put it in the data layer? There's two different methods you can use to get that. One is to write some JavaScript and push that within your website onto the data layer. Two is to actually create a tag within Google Tag Manager itself, which fires and puts some information onto the data layer. Let's do the second method. Now, I'm not going to give you a full script for it for multiple reasons, but I can give you a few hints. So you'd create a custom HTML tag. You then put in a script which says something like this, where you're generating an ID. You can use session IDs from your website, or you can use your own ID. One good example is to actually use IDs based on the Unix timestamp and some other random variable or the GTM unique event ID, which GTM creates themselves. Either which way you can merge the two. And then what you do is push that ID to the data layer. You can call that script data layer event ID. And the important thing is you push that onto all pages at page view. Now remember, in our code, we pushed an event ID into the data layer, which means we now have to set a variable which pulls that same event ID from the data layer. Let's call it event ID and here we'll call it the data layer variable and its name has to be exactly the same. This is case sensitive, so you have to remember to use the exact same word, copy paste it ideally in there. You save it and now this event ID is available for you to call absolutely anywhere within your tags. So you've got your event ID now from the data layer. You've pushed it to the data layer. You've now got it back from the data layer in a variable. What you can now start doing is pushing this event ID to both the GA4 CAPI tag as well as your pixel tag. Let's start with the pixel tag. What you need to do is this is your standard pixel tag. You go to this place right here. And you have to add the following code. I'll share this code with you in the description. You add the code which passes event ID. In this case, I'm passing it as page view dot. And then this is the name that I've given for my event ID variable. But before I save it, very often you'll have a no script tag. Add ampersand EID equal to and this exact same event ID. So here, 
and passing the event ID in both the regular scripted tag as well as the no script section of the tag. I then save it and this is passing the event ID to my Facebook pixel. I also need to send the exact same event ID to GTM server side, which then passes it on to Facebook conversions API. What I need to do for that is in the configuration tag, which is what is sending my page view, I've set the server container. Note that this is a new feature where you can say send to server container. You no longer have to actually specify a transport URL. But what you then do is click fields to set, add a new row, and you say event underscore ID, and pass in this value, which is the exact same value that I had set. Now, if I save this, what I have is two tags, one for the pixel, which is sending the page view event ID, and one for server side, which is also sending that exact same page view and event ID. Facebook then receives both of these, and depending on the timing, and it'll drop one of the events and keep only the other one, so long as they both come in within a certain period of time and have that same event ID on there. So there you have it, a really simple and straightforward way to set up event IDs, pass them to the data layer, pick them up from the data layer, and then send them off to your various tags. This works for not only the page view, but all the other tags as well. The information that you need, I've pasted all of those various snippets of code. The only thing that you now need to do is figure out what you actually want to put in that event ID. Like I said, some combination of the Unix timestamp and a random number works perfectly well, but in other websites and in different situations, you might choose to do it differently. You could use a Unix timestamp and maybe a session ID. If you have unique session IDs, you might want to use those. If you use subscriber ID or user IDs on your website, you might want to use those. There are lots of different situations. So long as every single event ID is unique, you should be fine using them. I hope this has helped. Um, and if you have any more questions, of course, definitely post them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer as much as possible. Thank you.